Shaka Hislop, Stevie Nichol join us on today's edition of ESPN FC Extra Time. Gentlemen, great to be with you. We got some questions from the fans on Twitter. You're many fans on Twitter, Shaka and Stevie. Uh, for both of you, and this coming off the uh, news we saw today, Spurs starting to get busy here in the transfer window, or maybe starting to think about it. Gareth Bale and uh, Reguilon from Sevilla, Real Madrid. If uh, Tottenham are signing Reguilon, is the question. If they get Bale moved over the line, do Tottenham knock on the top four once again? Shaka, what do you think? Uh, yes, but that's that's a yes with a caveat. And, and obviously, I, I think it's less about Reguilon than it is about Gareth Bale. If you can keep Gareth Bale fit for 32 games this season, I think Spurs have a chance of getting in the top four. Um, I'm not putting them in the top four just yet, even if they get it, uh, even if it gets done. But they certainly have they have a real chance. When a week ago, give them what we what we said, well, not a full week, but give them what we saw from them last weekend. Um, I, I was having I was having those doubts. But that all again comes down to whether or how many games you can get out of Gareth Bale. Uh, that is still the big question. Stevie, I'm trying to think back through the predictions that we saw on the show. I don't think we had anybody have Spurs in the top four. You think these moves make a difference? Uh, yes, I think they do. Um, it's very difficult to see whether it, it catapults them into the top four, but certainly the two fullbacks they've signed, uh, Doherty along with Gullian. Or what, how how do you pronounce it again, Seb? Regulon. <laughs> Regulon. Regulon, yeah, yeah. That's not quite oh, my. Oh, oh, that's not quite how good. I would we, we say. We can go with Gulligan, Stevie. <laughs> we can go with <laughs> Good evening, man. <clears throat> right, the guy at the back. <laughs> so they have two good signings going forward because, quite frankly, Spurs, over the last, oh my goodness, what, six months on the field, have, have looked a little desperate going forward. They don't look as though they're going to create on paper with Kane and Son and. and Mora uh, with Deli Alley on, on paper that looks great, but they haven't been doing it. So, if you sign Gareth Bale and you've got two fullbacks now that you, that, that going forward will will deliver as far as assists and Doherty will score goals, then that's going to push the rest. But I'm not going to turn around and say yes, they get in the top four. Shaka, is there any reason Wolves? can't challenge for a top four spot this season, given that they don't have to worry about playing in the Europa League and getting fatigued? What do you say? Listen, I, I, Wolves are an incredible team and, and you saw that last season and not having to compete in, in Europa League, I think, uh, works in, in their benefit without question. But the big the thing about Wolves is, as good as they were last season, um, you just always lean towards the usual suspects because the question becomes, can Wolves do it two seasons on the bounce? Now, no real suggestion to, to, to say no, but early on in the season with the usual suspects continuing to spend as, as big as they have been obviously that's that's going to take um that, that's where everybody everybody's focus is and now you're waiting for the usual suspects to prove us wrong uh and somebody like wolves and leicester to, to continue to uh exceed even their own expectations shaka how could you answer a question about wolves and not mention raul jimenez especially after yesterday's extra time stevie was so high on jimenez and how he'd love to see him at liverpool right okay no, raul that was <laughs> oh no 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 that was dan Dan's, better than Firmino, right and it wasn't me but... that said it it was dan thomas oh well we didn't let him off as you probably <laughs> noticed seb i did i did i'm staying out i'm done <laughs> All right, uh, next question. Oh, Stevie, this one you will love. A stat attack. Liverpool won 14 games by a single goal last season. Considering this, will Steve change his mind on the favourites? I guess Stevie... Well, I'm going to say no. Yeah, you pick Liverpool. I'm going, to, I'm going to say no, but I'm going to say no for two reasons. Yes, Liverpool... Uh, since they won the league, defensively have been suspect. They, they started against Leeds defensively suspect. But I still think they've got more goals, more goals in them, you know. I mean, I think you could argue that last season, uh, you know, they left goals on the table. So I, th I think that could balance its way out if, if need be. So I'm still going to say Liverpool are favourites. Speaking of Liverpool, Stevie, should Liverpool at least inquire about Luis Suarez given his current situation at Barcelona. What do you think? An Anfield return, Stevie? Absolutely. 
One hundred percent. That would be a great. Well, it, it it's complete and utter mix. It's it's been smart. You're going to get a guy. If if after you speak to him, you're going to get a guy who I think is going to be happy to go back and play at Anfield. Uh, he's going to get a sufficient amount of games to keep him happy. Uh, he's quality. He will score goals. He will give you something um, in the front three that they don't. They don't. I think possess. I mean, maybe you could argue they don't need anything else right now, but so it, it makes complete sense. You know, Liverpool have to get a, a, an experienced campaigner who can play at the level that Liverpool are going to be playing at, or you've got a real star, an up-and-coming young player who, again, is more than happy just to to be there and 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 get the amount of games that he might get. But to the Suarez one, hundred percent, I would do it. Let, let me ask this, Steve, though. Let me ask this. Um, let, let's say I, I understand, I hear everything you're saying, but if you do, what's the over-under on how many games Luis Suarez plays, if you do sign him, between, you know, rotating and, and uh, his, his, his fitness? What do you think is, is your over-under games return for, for Luis Suarez, if Liverpool do sign him? Well, you've got 34 Premier League, and you've got, you're going to do decent at Carabao Cup. There's maybe four or five games. You've got FA Cup, another four or five games. You know, so he's going to be, he's going to be probably getting about 15 games. Mm. I mean, and, and you think, and you think he's, 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 and, the, and he's happy with, he's happy, he's happy to no, come back to the Liverpool no, no, to play 15. No, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no, not. I'm, I'm just it. asking genuinely, genuinely. I'm asking you. I'm going to answer your question. It's the first question you ask him. Look, are you happy to get 15 games, whether it's Premier League, FA Cup or Carabao Cup? Are you happy to get 15, max 20? That's the first question you ask him. And if he says yes, get the pen out, get the contract out and get it signed. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Shaka, a, uh, a goalie question for you. Smart for Arsenal to sell Emiliano Martinez to Aston Villa, reportedly for like 25 million pounds, after how well he performed when he stepped in for the injured Bern Leno. I, it, it seems like a week or two ago, we were talking about Martinez as Arsenal's obvious number one. Now he's gone? Yeah, I, I was saying Martinez was was, uh, was was Arsenal's obvious number one. Um, but quite clearly, you know, Leno is get, get, gets a nod because of the amount of money they spent on him, um, because of, you know, maybe people see him as, as, as their long-term as their long long term number one. Um, at the same time, I, I'm not so sure that it's Arsenal's choice to sell him. I think they were boxed into that corner, won by, by Martinez's own performances, and he now sees himself as a number one, and, and rightly so. If if I'm Martinez, given what I did back end of last season, um, my performances and how highly my, my own stock rose, and I go to Mikel Arteta and say, listen, am I going to be your number one this season? And he says, well, I'm not so sure. I'm going to go with Bernd Leno and, and we'll see. I'm asking for a move. I'm, I'm saying, well, if you can't guarantee me first-team football mm -hmm. or that I'm going to be starting, I'd, I'd prefer to, to, try, to try my luck elsewhere. I've, I've sat on the bench all these years. Now I want to be a starter. So I, I, I think he more, and, and I don't have any insider information on this. I'm just looking and just putting myself in issues. I would be pushing for that move more than Arsenal would be then Arsenal will be pushing for, for that move um, to the question. Next question comes from Andy. Should Jamie Vardy be considered a Premier League legend? He has more goals than Drogba and has won a Premier League title, unlike Steven Gerrard. Stevie? Absolutely. I think he is. You know, he, he straight away became a legend, not just at Leicester, but in the Premier League for being the top scorer and a, and a side that absolutely was the, the Cinderella story. Uh, and at 33 years of age, He's just won the golden boot. I, 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 please, somebody tell me who, who was the last person of 33 years of age to win the golden boot. I don't think there is one in the Premier League, is there? Mm. Apart from him. Our next question, golden boot related, and Stevie, down to your pick. Stevie, how could you pick Aguero to win the golden boot when he hasn't won the award since 2015 and seems to get injured every season? Well, because you know he's going to be in, in and around it. Um, he got 16 goals in 24 games last season. The previous five, I'm going to say, he got 20 plus. 
20 plus. So, listen, he's 32 years of age. We've just spoken with Jamie Vardy winning the Golden Boot at 33. So, why not Aguero? You you know he's going to be up there. So, I would be very confident. Sure. Picking Manchester. Any amount of money on Aguero. Yeah, picking Manchester City's uh, leading striker as your Golden Boot, not. Not going I, out Sebi, too far I, on a limb. Sebi, I also think I also think that Stevie's efforts are, are seeming impartial because he's picked a Liverpool goalkeeper to be goalkeeper this season. No. He's picked a Liverpool defender to be defender this season. He'll pick out a Liverpool midfielder to be midfielder this season. But being the impartialist as he is, he went with Aguero. Shaq. Shaq, did you know what she showed last week when I said De Bruyne <laughs> would be the best player in the Premier League? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Impartial effort. Effort is the key word there. He efforts it. Shaka, when you're oh, face... sorry, no. Sorry, no, no, no. Raul, Raul Jimenez. Raul Jimenez talks to her. Yeah. There you go. Now we're talking. Now we're making sense. Thank you, Stevie. Finally, we've been working on, working on these guys for a while. Swap deal. Yep. Swap yep. deal with Wills. Yep. Firmino. Better than Firmino. Firmino goes. Right. And, and, and Wolves get money, by the way. Totally. I mean, he's at least worth that much, right? Oh, why? <laughs> Shaka, uh, when you were facing a penalty, did you ever try to put off or delay the attacking player beforehand just to get an advantage? Like when you're late to our showtimes here. Um, uh, uh -huh. But first of all, I I don't know what advantage you get by making make, make any striker wait any. I mean, the fact of the matter is, uh, it, it's all in, in, in the striker's hands and there's no pressure on, on a goalkeeper. I, I, I don't see the point in, in trying to delay it. I kind of, um, I would walk to the side of the goal and see if I could pick up any any cues from, from the striker in terms of his body language or which way he's looking or, um, and, and, and use that. But I was never one to like walk to the penalty spot and say something silly and or whatever it is you, you're trying to, trying to do. Um, Huh. You know, the pressure's on him. Let him know that the pressure's on him. That's all. Guys, we've... Uh, so walk this... to the other side. Go ahead, Steve. So walk to the other side of the goal doesn't count. I What's say, the difference I'm, between walking to I'm... the other side of the goal and walking straight out? No I'm not going to... I, when I say that, I'm not going to go walking, you know, all by the corner flag. Well, for starters, Chuck, I, I always kept a water Chuck, bottle you, you, and a are... towel. Hold on, listen. I always kept a water, bo water bottle and a towel Delay. In, in the net, hanging on one side. So we'd go there, have a little drink of water, play around the tower, get the gloves all ready. Like that. That's what I mean. Walk to the side, get a drink, dry your hands. Yeah, there's no delay in that whatsoever. <laughs> and by the way, you must be unique. I've never spoken to any goalie who's not trying to be clever in some way when he's about to face a penalty kick. Stevie, give Come us the, the penalty takers. Does, does it mess with you then when you got to wait? You asking Stevie? I think uh, I, I think it I think it depends on who it is. I, I, I think the longer the delay, the more. Listen, penalty taking is all about positivity and 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 positive thoughts. And the longer you have to wait, then those those wee guys can start creeping into your brain and then. The longer you wait, by the time you're about to take it, you're an absolute wreck and you can't take it. <laughs> Speaking of uh, absolute... That's why I didn't take penalties. <laughs> Never, not even one. Um, we, heard, uh, we heard Alexis Sanchez talking about his first training sessions with Manchester United and then the reaction afterwards. Uh, Ritvik asks, what's your worst first impressions Ooh. at any clubs you played at? Shaka? Uh, listen, it's, it's a kind of an unfair question. Um, I, I, I'll say this. Probably, you know, I was think, thinking about it, probably Portsmouth. But that, I, then again, that's not fair. I, I, because, listen, I, I started at Reading, coming from college in the U.S. So everything looked immaculate and immense, even though we were playing at Elm Park, which is over 100 years old. I thought it was the best thing I'd, I'd seen in, in, in all of my life. I then went to I then went to Newcastle, given everything that was going on up there at the time with Kevin Keegan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then West Ham, then had to take a step back down to to, to Portsmouth, which is why you know kind of by default um, I, I've I've said them um, and then finished up at, back at, at West Ham again. So 
just in terms of first impressions of, of, of the club and the facilities, by default, not necessarily really by, by impression, I have to go with uh, Portsmouth. Stevie, who was the best player that you ever coached? Who was the most frustrating to coach? And why didn't you draft me coming out of college in 2005? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I saw you playing. <laughs> uh, I'm lucky you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I coached the All Star team, so there was uh, there was a chap called uh, David Beckham, mm -hmm. and another chap, um, one of your one of uh, your fellow countrymen, mm -hmm. Seb, uh, Quantum Blanco. Nailed the pronunciation uh, so too. The two of them were. Yeah, the two of them were phenomenal. Blanco Blanco was brilliant. Mm -hmm. But I guess, I guess on a domestic front, um, I, uh, I drafted Clint Dempsey. Uh, and so probably he went on to be the most successful player that I coached. P pretty strong. It's a pretty strong draft pick. I've never, hold on, I've never, I have to vent here. I've never seen anybody go over easier than Blanco. Played against, I played against Blanco a few times at the national level. No, no. And if the breeze was strong enough. Ale Mor not even Ale Moreno? Yeah, that's, no. a, that's, a, that's a good call. Now, nah, Blanco was what, worse than I'll Moreno. I'll tell you what, Moreno. Blanco was worse than Moreno. I'll tell you what, Moreno. No question. Moreno. No, go ahead. Yeah, but... Go ahead. Sully Cuauhtémoc Blanco's well, good name here on Extra Time. Please. No, not at all. He was smart. He was. Uh, think of Ali in a multiplier. You know, <laughs> when I was at the Reds. For smart? We'd play, or what? We'd play against Chicago. <laughs> we play against Chicago. I was wondering where you're going with that. He was smart. Think so, of Ali. We were playing against play. Chicago, right? And we came in at halftime, and then we're coming at the end of the game, and and all the defenders were all going, "Oh, Blanco, he's a cheating so and so, and all he does is dive." And I'm sat, I, I, I'm sitting listening to this. I'm in the coach's room with the door open, and I'm sat with Paul, and I'm sitting listening to this, and I'm turning to Paul and going, "You know something? They're just too stupid." He's just too smart for them. All he was doing, all he was doing, was putting his, his his body in the way from a different angle, so that these idiots would run into him and hit him. I mean, he was just too smart for them. But they didn't see it that way. They thought he was a diver. He's not he a diver. Was a he's diver. Just, he's just very. He, it's just very, no. number one. He was very clever, and mm -hmm. and number two, he had, he had two fantastic feet. You talk about if if you had a lineup, right? I got people to wear a, a, a football strip or a soccer kit, and you went down the line. He'd be the last one you picked because <laughs> he doesn't look like a football player. But I'll tell you what: as soon as the whistle goes and you get him on that field and you get him the ball, my goodness, what a player! Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.